My name is Andres Gorban Arthen, and I am president of the European Congress of Ethnic Religions, which is an organization based in Lithuania that seeks to bring together what remains of the indigenous ethnic uh, religions and, and to whatever degree cultures of Europe. Before we start, um, let me ask, uh, we, we, there is uh, already recording and uh, videotaping going on and we ask that you refrain from photography or, or uh, <laughs> video recording um, during the program. We, um, <clears throat> because of time limitations, we, what we would like to do is uh, to not take any questions or comments as while we're speaking. And uh, if, as we talk, any questions come up or any, any clarifications that you would like or whatever, please raise your hand and Donovan will bring you a card and pen and you can write your question and at the end of the session we'll collect all the cards and then we'll, we'll pick whatever we feel we have time to answer and we'll be glad to answer your questions then. So, as I was saying before, we, well actually all of us are part of the, the European Congress of Ethnic Religions, an organization that was founded in 1998 in, um, in Europe, specifically in Lithuania, um, not long after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And um, the, um, a lot of the indigenous practices in what were then Soviet countries remained alive during the Soviet occupation. In some, in some cases, they were actually to some degree protected from the persecution of Christianity during the Soviet occupation, which may be why they, some of them uh, thrived, oftentimes disguised as folklore um, under the Soviet regime. And then once the, the Iron Curtain fell, uh, many of these people came forward, uh, particularly in an effort to preserve their, what remained of their, their indigenous beliefs and practices. And then they began to make contact with other people throughout Europe. And in 1998, the ECER was formed. Originally as the World Congress of Ethnic Religions, more recently changed to, to ECER, European Congress of Ethnic Religions. And my two colleagues uh, with me um, are also members of the organization. In fact, they are founding members of the organization. To my left is Inya Trincunyene who is the, the Krive, or Supreme High Priestess of Ramuba, which is the name given nowadays to the traditional um, religion, ethnic religion of Lithuania, and actually it's really a Baltic religion because it's, it's practiced in many, in, in some of the other Baltic countries. Um, Lithuania was the last European country to become Christianized in 1387, was it? 87, 89? Um, around there, <coughs> officially. Although, although, as we can see, the, 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 the beliefs and the practices lasted much longer. To my right is Vlasis Prasias, who is the Secretary General of the ESE, which is an organization of Hellenic pagans in Greece who keep their ancient traditions alive, again, in the face of, um, of uh, persecution may be a strong word, but maybe they, he wouldn't think so, uh, cert certainly uh, um, conflict with the, the mainstream Greek Orthodox Church. <clears throat> and uh, each of them is going to talk a bit about who they are and what their practices are about and so on. Before we do that, I would like to read a little bit from the declaration of the delegates of the ECER in 1998 when the organization was formed to give you an idea of what it seeks to do. Oh. 
All cultures, as well as native religions and faiths, should be equally valued and respected. Each region and each people have their distinctive local traditions, native faith, world outlook, mythology, folklore, etc., which articulate their love of their land and history, and cultivate a regard for the sacredness of all life and the divinity of nature. Just as nature survives through a wide variety of species, so can humanity be allowed to, to develop freely and without interference along a wide variety of cultural expressions. According to our ancient traditional ethics, the earth and all creation must be valued and protected. We as human beings must find our place within the web of all life, not outside or separate from the whole of creation. Historically, those of other ethnic backgrounds have been adopted into new ones if they took on the beliefs and mores that are a larger part of the identity of that people. Although we are convinced that every human being has the best possibilities within his, her own culture to reestablish the harmony within the divine aspect, it does not, however, exclude anyone from participation in their activities. The ECER is therefore categorically opposed to discrimination, suppression, or persecution based on race, color, social class, religion, or natural, national origin. So, without further ado, I'd like to uh, pass the mic over to my friend Inia, and as she speaks, the slides that you will be seeing are slides from her home country of Lithuania, and some of the ceremonies and, and uh, gatherings that her people organize. Inya Chinkunyene. Dear friends, I am so happy to be here because it is the very important event, in, it is the biggest interfaith event in the world. So, um, and the, it is my great honor to present Romova, indigenous Lithuanian ethnic religion community. Romova embodies one of the oldest religions in the Europe, which begins in prehistoric times with the first inhabitants of Baltic uh, lands and extends its spirit indefinitely in the Baltic culture today and for sure will continue in future generations. So let me uh, start with a short introduction to traditional Baltic belief. Firstly, it's very uh, historic and old religion, I already said it, and anthropologists date origins of traditional Baltic belief not just to prehistoric times of the Indo-Europeans, but even to more ancient times. I mean times when uh, they were um, matriarchal cultures in, in Europe. Um, and so we have uh, a lot of remainings from these times that is at least uh, four or five thousand years ago. Baltic religion is very peaceful religion. We do not deny the validity of other religions and other gods. It proclaims the sacredness of nature as the most evident manifestation of God's will, uh, the way of life in accord with the traditional Baltic ethic, our own way to God as it has been defined in the centuries of our presence within God. The essence of our belief is the harmony. We have special word to name it that is Dharna. So it is the harmony of the world, nature, and the human, the creation 
protection and preservation of this harmony. The highest purpose of life is to live in harmony with the spiritual world of nature and with people. This is seen as the purpose of life, the attainable happiness. A central feature of the Romova faith is the sacred fire that is constantly kept burning in every home. So you can also see in pictures that during the rituals we always light fire. Fire is considered the only worshipful symbol, the great purifier and sustainer of the nature and the sun itself. Fire is sacred and eternal. Um, in old times, tribes had official sanctuaries on high hills and on riverbanks where a fire was maintained, guarded by priests, and in each house was the sacred hearth in which fire was never extinguished. Our main deities are Laima, goddess of destiny, she decides about human's life and she takes the most important part in birth, blessing of baby and wedding ceremonies and rituals. So uh, is Gabia, goddess of family and fire. Gemina, uh, mother of earth, goddess of fertility. And Perkuna, splendor god, sky god and god of war. So you can see that of uh, these four of gods, which I name, three of them are feminine. So for, for um, us it is very important. And all they are equal. Um, these deities, deities that I have just mentioned are just few from our large and rich in diversity pantheon. We pray uh, to our deities, give them offerings and conduct rituals at either domestic or public sacred places. And uh, as mentioned before, fire is an essential element of our rituals that connect us with our deities. Romova celebrations and the rituals reflect the cycles of nature. That means calendar celebrations and the cycle of human life, birth, marriage and death. In this slide you, uh, it's a lot of photos um, of marriages and child blessings. Uh, let us go back to history and the contemporary issues that Romova faces now. Uh, Andres uh, already mentioned that Lithuania is the last country in Europe to be Christianized. Um, Lithuania resisted, resisted the Christian aggression but was constrained to accept Christianity in 1387 politically for surviving. It was uh, only at the end of uh, Fourth Federal that the sacred fire was distinguished in Eastern and uh, Western Lithuania. Uh, what I uh, need to say is that at first these changes um, affected principally the nobility and the conservative Lithuanian population maintain the traditions of their ancestors and secretly worship their gods for many centuries after official Christianizing the Lithuania. And um, in the 17th and 18th centuries, Jesuit missionaries pointed out in their reports the lamentable state of affairs. They said that Peasants did not attend churches, did not accept the Holy Communion, the superstitious and barbaric rituals. This is how missionaries described our rituals. We are still alive all across Lithuanian lands. That was in 17 and 18 centuries. So thanks to the people of the countryside who still remained in the ancient traditions, the traditional Baltic belief 
he has never died or flourished away from these lands. In the mid uh, 19th century, when folklore began to be systematically collected, and even in 20th century, when after World War II, in the 60s, students of Vilnius University began to write down folk songs and tales, a rich spiritual tradition still thrived in the villages. And this tradition inspired them, and including myself, to restore and consciously continue our ancient tradition, to publicly perform such ceremonies as honoring the sacred flame. So this faith survived in many forms until these times. So they are uh, um, national traditions, songs, language, and morals. So how much time do you mm -hmm. um, This source of Baltic religion and of our practice is the living, uninterrupted, unwritten tradition of spiritual practice. They are manifestations of it in the old songs, tales, legends, customs, and other heritage of our ancestors. The incredible, rich, and ancient Lithuanian folklore is one of the most important sources of Baltic religion. As I want to mention, we have Sutartines. Sutartines. It's a Lithuanian multi-part songs, multi songs, they were included in National Inventor of, of Intangible uh, uh, Cultural Heritage Values. So uh, this type of meditative songs you will be able to join tomorrow. Tomorrow at 6, six o'clock. Yes, so. Um, so these uh, sutartines and chants uh, allow us to reconstruct a metaphysics in which the highest aim of a human life is to live in harmony with the will of the gods, gods with the rights of nature and with the other members of society. Um, what can I say about the situation of our community today? A contemporary religious community, Romova, is the most intensive growing community in Lithuania, comparing with others. It was discovered that comparing the results of the census of the population in 2002 and 2012, uh, the, um, the difference was uh, five times, that means five times more, uh, more people. Um, we are uh, named themselves as uh, old believers. Uh, we are sure that the number of our community uh, is still increasing. But the last news regarding the census of population claim that the next census there will be no questions regarding the religious beliefs. So we <coughs> will have no possibility to compare. Yes. Um, uh, what else can I say about the situation, about our legal situation in Lithuania? That our com uh, community is registered in, nine, in 1992 when we got independence. And uh, so, uh, but uh, we still, we, we uh, feel uh, the discrimination in our country. Because there is division of the religious communities into three groups, three levels, 
according to traditionality and acceptance by state. We have two criteria. The traditionality and acceptance by state. The highest positions have communities which are called traditional and are acknowledged by state. So um, these are mainly Abrahamic religions. Our community, Romova, is called not traditional and not acknowledged by state. But as far as I said, we are the only community who has the roots and intangible tradition. Therefore, we feel this division as discriminative to our indigenous faith. And uh, still now, due to opposition of political movements that affiliate themselves with Christianity and Christian values, we still face problems by achieving the status of traditional religious community within Lithuania. Despite this, I strongly believe that Lithuanian parliament will vote for acknowledgement of Romova this year. And we still need a support. Still need a support. And I think that maybe um, the letter from <coughs> Parliament would be would be great for us. So so um, again it's my great pleasure and great honor to talk to you today and witness this beautiful and meaningful uh, gathering. All around the world, the religion means to enrich culture and uh, lives of people for thousands of years and lives of people for thousands of years and let, and let God's and goddesses lead us and bless us all this way in the future. Thank you, Anya. It was wonderful. I, I would like to add that in uh, in 2009, when the Parliament was held in Melbourne, Australia, um, the, um, the then Prime Minister of Australia had issued a formal apology to the Australian Aboriginal peoples for the so-called stolen generations when Aboriginal children were forcibly taken from their families and placed essentially as indentured servants in the homes of white Christian Australians. And this happened until the, the 1970s. And uh, so, so the parliament convened a, uh, an indigenous task force that, that held an indigenous assembly with indigenous representatives from all over the world that went to Melbourne in solidarity with the aboriginal peoples there to have a sort of a grand, grand international council. And uh, the uh, the the representatives of indigenous European traditions were two members of Romova, one of whom was Jonas Trincunas, Inia's late husband. And, uh, and the, I, I am proud to say that the parliament so far has been the only major international interfaith organization that has recognized and welcomed representatives from the indigenous traditions of Europe. And I'm also very glad that other indigenous peoples from other parts of the world have been so welcoming of, of these people whose, whose traditions are so much on the line. And with that, we're going to switch over to Blasis Rastias, representing the Issei in Greece. For those of you who came in late, uh, let me reiterate that rather than taking questions during the presentations, if you have any questions or, or comments or what have you, um, uh, clarifications, not really comments, we'd like to get questions, uh, to please raise your hand at any point and Donovan will bring you a, 
a card where you can write your question and then we, we will uh, look at how much time we have left. So without further ado, Blasis Rasgas. Φίβε Θεέ, Άναξ Πυρφόρε, Τρυποδηλάλε, Ξανθέτω Ξεφτά, Άπολον Θεέ, Μάντι Δαφνηφόρε, Δέμον Καθάρσιε και Αυξητά, Εσένα Καλούμε, Εσένα Υμνούμε, Πίθιε, Λατώε, Πεάν, Κοσμητά. Dearest spiritual brothers and sisters, please excuse my English as the certain language is not my native one. My native language was the common language for the people of the then known world for almost seven centuries from the 300 before the beginning of the Christian dating until the fourth century of the Christian dating. After this, the civilization of my people has been teared down by the Christianized Roman Empire and my converted people have since then been marginalized in the history of mankind. The Hellenes invented a long line of cultural products which they lavishly offered to the whole mankind, a long line of cultural gifts that still in our days they do grace all the civilized and educated people. Let me mention but a few of them, philosophy, representational arts, theater, democracy, the political man, the concept of arete, that is the human excellence through an earthly imitation of the qualities of the gods. All these, plus many others, that the economy of time does not allow us to detail one by one, were products of deeply spiritual and religious minds, they were realizations of a certain advanced worldview, of a certain and advanced ontology, theology, and religion. The Hellenic ethnic religion, like all the other natural, indigenous, and ethnic religions, has not been created by specific individuals, and by extension, it is not based on revelations. The foundations of all natural, indigenous, and ethnic religions are lost in the depths of the antiquity of each ethnos, of each certain body of people united by common uh, descent, worldview, and ethics. Arising from the misty times of prehistory, the Hellenic ethnic religion not only later led my people to the cultural miracle of the so-called classical Greece, but also influenced during its Pelasgian, Minoan, and Mycenaean periods, the worldviews, cultures, and religions of all the nations that it came in contact with, thus creating in the then known world similar cultures with similar moral principles and value systems. This ancient dispersal of the Hellenic spiritual perceptions and values is illustrated in our familiar mythological way in the stories of the supposed expeditions into quotes of God Dionysus to the east up to India and of God Hercules to the west up to the Atlantic Ocean. The Etruscans, the Romans, the Celts all mentioned our solar god Hercules in their ethnic traditions, especially the Celts who consider him as the divine father of their nation. Through such influences, the whole continent of Europe for centuries gave birth to many notable cultures, ethnic traditions and civilizations, the common characteristics of whom were the dignity and self-determination of the human being, the quest for virtue and for the truth, reverence for the sacred, deep respect towards nature and the ideal of personal and political freedom. I used above the term ontology because the Hellenic ethnic religion, just uh, as its famous and respected daughter, the Hellenic philosophy, mainly is concerned about the being, in our language, toine. We honor the ondos on, the unborn and eternal true being. We worship its first 
multiplications into separate perfect entities, that is the also unborn and eternal Thei, the gods. And we admire the harmony, order and beauty attained by the part of the true being that we call cosmos, jewel in our own language. In our days, we celebrate the perpetual circles of nature based on a solar celebration calendar that has been set up in a way that effectively links ancient and modern reality as well as the ancient direct relationship with nature and the moral guidance modern day people need. Each of our 12 monthly celebrations is directly linked to moral exercise in specific virtues related to the specific honored gods. We also celebrate the new moons, the numenia of our ancestors. Our rites are performed according to our ancestral customs, that is by invo inviting the gods, reciting hymns and making libations of wine, milk or honey and bloodless sacrifices, for example offering flowers, fruit, incense or perfume. I will not use the time of this brief speech for further descriptions of the basic principles of the Roman, of the uh, religion of the Hellenes. For those of you that wish to learn more on the Hellenic ethnic religion, we have brought with us a detailed uh, brochure, uh, this one, you can find it in the desk uh, up there at the end of the, of the hall, that uh, they may have with our compliments. I'd like to use the time left more on the history of our religion from the times that it was violently attacked uh, until our times that despite of all persecutions we are still alive practicing and laboring hard for the hope with the hope to re rehellenize our people in a close or far future. On the fourth century of the Christian dating, the Hellenic ethnic religion was accused of being a demon worship and the pillar of all forms of paganism in the then known world and was attacked with tremendous violence by the forces of the newly converted Roman Empire. Our temples were either burned to the ground or demolished, our altars were polluted and overthrown, our priests, priestesses, philosophers, scientists and scholars were slaughtered, our libraries were set on fire, our rituals, divination practices and mysteries were prohibited under the penalty of death, and even our ethnic name, Hellenes, was criminalized as synonymous to the idolator and the demon worshiper. Even our political invention of self-government democracy was anathematized as civitas diaboli, as a political system invented by David himself. Despite the bloody persecutions though, many of our spiritual leaders survived and our religion went into stealth mode and became invisible to the eyes of its persecutors. A notable amount of our sacred text has been rescued by these spiritual leaders, saving much of the knowledge on the ontology, moral philosophy, theology and praxis of the Hellenes. From time to time in the history, when the darkness seemed to thin out, this underground spiritual leadership attempted to re-emergence of our ethnic tradition and faith in Greece, in Italy and in the East. The strongest of all these attempts was the one in the times of Georgios Gemistos Plithon in the beginning of the 15th century. All these attempts failed, our truth though made it successfully into our times. We went public only when democracy and human rights were well established in Greece. In the late 80s, 13 years after the collapse of the most recent military dictatorship. Up until 2014, though, the legislation of the Greek state did not provide for a process uh, whereby other religions than the Orthodox Christianity, the Muslims of Thraki territory and Judaism could be officially recognized. Our organization, the Supreme Council of Ethnic Hellenes, YSEE, as the sole entity representing the historically continuous Hellenic ethnic religion, had denounced this outrageous situation and in 2006 via a memorandum submitted to the authorities requested among other things the establishment of religious legal personality in Greece. On October 2014 
law 4301 clearly defined uh, what known religion is and also granted religious legal personality to the rest of the Abrahamic religions and denominations. For all the others, in the all the others it's us also included, it required a rather complicated application signed by at least 300 individuals. We exercised this right and at the same time applied for a license to found and operate a place of worship. Our request for becoming a religious legal personality is now at the Supreme Court of Greece, Arios Pagos, after it was rejected twice on the court of first instance at, at the appeals court under the pretense that the epithet ethnic may uh, mislead people that our religion is the official, that means national religion of the Greek state. Two identical verdicts obviously choose to ignore the fact that all around the world and for almost one and a half centuries now the term ethnic is used by the science of religious studies to define the numerous religions that are associated with a particular people and to distinguish them from, uh, from the uh, so-called universal, global or proselytizing ones. Meanwhile, since February of uh, 2017, the Hellenic ethnic religion has become officially a known religion according to Article 17 of the above mentioned law with the licensing and, op and operation of an official place of worship in Athens that was given by the competent authority of the state that is the General Secretariat of Religion of the Greek Ministry of Education and Religion. This uh, now grant us uh, the right to change in the registry offices our faith from uh, Christian Orthodox because all were baptized like this to Hellenic ethnic religion and to perform name giving and wedding rituals with full legal value. Dearest spiritual brothers and sisters, the natural and most sacred law of diversity does not only concern biological species, it also encompasses human societies and their cultural achievements. For example, their way of life, their traditions, and of course, their religions. For hundreds of thousands of years, humanity experienced wonderful diversity where thousands of nations live according to their origins and temperament with their own customs and their own religions. Nowhere in the planet had uh, there been identical homogenized people. On the contrary, in every territory, an indigenous ethnic civilization would flourish. None of these nations were interested in imposing their civilization, much less their religion, onto others, and they would willingly adopt cultural elements from one another when they found them useful. Later on, this wonderful multiplicity was unfortunately destroyed by a violent expanding religions, a victim of which has also been the Hellenic ethnic religion, suffering relentless persecutions, but managing to survive unlike thousands of others. So, it is an obvious duty of the resurfaced Hellenic ethnic religion to support all surviving indigenous ethnic religions, traditions, and cultures all over the earth. This is why in 1998 we were a founding member of the then World Congress of Ethnic Religions that on 2010 was renamed to European Congress of Ethnic Religions, ECER, for the reason that the European continent has its own indigenous religions traditions and cultures, some having successfully survived underground, but others brought close to total extinction. That all of them need support, the ones of the first category for their rightful restoration, and the others of the second category for a serious and dignified revival. To paraphrase a Native American woman, Mrs. Cindy Gilday, Whatever breaths someone who follows an indigenous religion, politics is happening and history is being written. 
Thank you very much for your attention. May God Apollo's light always shines on you all. Thank you, thank you, Blessis. Um, um, before before we go into the questions, <clears throat> let me say that for one one term that has been used widely here is the term pagan. And I know that for some people that is a troublesome word that uh, might be confusing or might be off-putting. In, in either case, we have uh, some handouts up here, uh, an introduction to paganism, which you are welcome to come and take one uh, at the end of the presentation. If we run out, there will be more at the booth of the Earth Spirit community, which is booth 911, easy to remember. Uh, down, uh, downstairs or upstairs? Downstairs. Okay, I have no idea where I am. Um, but um, also on on Tuesday at 12:15, I will be presenting a program entitled "The Indians of Old Europe," which uh, elaborates further on this topic and puts it in a more pan-European perspective. So, with that, let's go on to the questions. Okay. Yeah. So tomorrow's uh, service, 6 p.m. Sutertines. 6 p.m., not 6 a.m. So, <laughs> yes, and we are. Hmm. Yes. yes, what question? So it says on the card. It's 201D. Which one? Oh, so thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I thought this is question. So room 201D. 201D. Please come. You want to take that? Yeah, no, sir. What? Uh, this is, uh, there's a question, how do oh, the, the Rome of Lithuania and Hellenic oh, no, traditions... Oh, no, I give the wrong one. Okay, no, but also, <laughs> oh, also, okay. Uh, I will answer it and also okay. in here. Uh, okay. And the Hellenic tradition help those to, uh, in the diaspora, for example, the Americas, who also want to connect with their indigenous traditions, but cannot uh, move back to Lithuania or Greece. Uh, we have a... Uh, 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 some years ago, an operating uh, chapter in the USA, in uh, New York, uh, that uh, uh, does, uh, is very active, has uh, its own place in uh, New York, and uh, organizes uh, um, free uh, lessons for, for the uh, children of uh, um, the Hellenic uh, uh, ancestry, but also to, to stress it, uh, all the ethnic religions uh, welcome uh, everybody uh, from all uh, ancestries that uh, willingly uh, wants to participate uh, in uh, each certain religion. We, uh, we only don't go to the others and uh, proselytize them. Just we welcome the ones that want uh, with free will to, to come and participate in their own tradition. Uh, this is, can be also answered for by, by any. Are there some Lithuanians here? So, okay, if <laughs> so, the question is if Lithuanians can practice. Of course, they can. Of course, they be, uh, they require some knowledge. But the thing is that uh, um, the diaspora to uh, uh, America, when people came from the United States, the main the main uh, authority, the main uh, thing that united them, it was a Christian church. And still is still till our times. But of course there are uh, some uh, few communities in the United States, but um, they are not, uh, not big and um, 
it's it's still still a problem if people people want but you know in nowadays it's uh, more simple because there is an an internet and facebook and everything and so if people want to find people which are like minded so i i think that it's it's not problem so um the next question is um Mm, uh, I recently found from DNA uh, my my people c uh, come from the Baltic states. How can I learn more about this practice? So um, if you uh, are here, so so I just have some some um, some book, some main main principles of our Baltic religion and. Also, our uh, our music CDs, which can be a, a good in, a spiritual inspiration for it. And those are also at the Earth Spirit booth. <laughs> also at the Earth Spirit booth, booth yeah. 911. Okay. Um, so here, do you want to read this question? It's only the handwriting. Okay, sure. So, so. Uh, the question is, with the promotion and advancement of indigenous faith that is often associated with particular people, culture, and traditions, how do you interact with ethnocentrism? How do you deal with ethnocentrism? Yes, I think this was uh, answered uh, uh, at least up to a degree, a certain degree, with uh, the previous uh, answer of mine. Uh, that uh, every every people uh, first uh, is interested to its own uh, growth, survival, and so on. But uh, uh, the healthy ones, the healthy uh, stand towards uh, the rest of the humanity is to be open and to exchange uh, elements and also to accept the ones that want to participate. Uh, so. Uh, the, the healthy, because uh, what we call ethnic religions are healthy religions, because when they were not uh, attacked, uh, they were practicing this way. They are open, first of all, and they are open to give and to take uh, elements. They don't uh, 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 handle the, what we call a nation or ethnos in my language uh, as a closed system that doesn't communicate with anything, uh, uh, they see themselves as part of, of a holy uh, multiplicity that is the healthy way of the humanity, as exactly as in biology. Uh, the the uh, certain species that are homogenized, they are destroyed by nature, and uh, then we have uh, multiplicity again. Uh, uh, nature itself wants multiplicity. Uh, I don't know uh, if also uh, this can be answered by Indonesia, but uh, this is uh, uh, called uh, this only for me, so I can uh, answer okay. this. And, uh, okay. I, I'd like to answer that too, uh, ah. if, if I may. Okay. Um, I would just like to add to this uh, question. Um, I think certainly in places like the United States and Canada, especially Toronto, which as we keep hearing, is by far the most ethnically diverse city in the whole world. Um, the idea of ethnocentrism is, uh, in some ways, seems to clash with the culture that exists in both of these places, cultures which are very uh, ethnically diverse and essentially melting pots, the, 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 that prover proverbial sense of the melting pot. In, in many European countries, and, and, and again, you know, when we talk about Europe, oftentimes I find people in this side of the, the ocean tend to have a very um, uh, one-dimensional perspective on Europe, and a lot of it is based on large urban centers. So especially once you get away from the large urban centers, uh, a lot of European countries have a very strong ethnically centered culture in the, especially the population of the towns and the farmland and so on and so forth. And, um, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. It's a sense of pride of culture, pride of the land that you grew up in. 
Uh, and the uh, ethnocentrism becomes a problem when it becomes a way to shut anybody else who's different out, out of that. Um, I posed a question to one of the members of the ECR some time ago, and he, he is from Denmark, and he practices, as he puts it, the religion of his ancestors. And, you know, I mean, then, uh, Copenhagen is becoming a much more um, um, culturally diverse place, but m most of Denmark isn't. So if you travel through Denmark, you see blonde, blue-eyed, fair-skinned people. And so I said to him, suppose that a black person wanted to come and practice the religion of your people. What would you say to that? And he said, the first thing he said was, if the gods of my people want to accept this person, it is not my place to say no. If this person, if this person wants to worship the gods of my people, it is not my place to say no. However, the religion of my people is totally centered on this land that I was born and grew up in. So that person would need to live here to practice my religion because it's connected totally to the land. The ceremonies are all all take place in the Danish language, so they would need to speak Danish. And they are rooted in a culture that still exists in Denmark, so they would need to be in some way assimilated into the culture or be willing to be assimilated into the culture. If that, if that black person from, say, the United States or from Africa or whatever wanted to do all of that, we would welcome them. And what really struck me about that is that is the same kind of answer that I would expect from a Lakota or a Wurundjeri or a, a Yoruba in their native land. It's really not that different. We're not perhaps used to thinking of Europeans in this same context and I think in some ways that's part of what looking at the survivals of these very ancient traditions in many places uh, can give us a different perspective on European culture and therefore Western culture. One more question. Yeah, uh, yes. And this is why in Greece, to, to make people understand, we use the, the uh, slogan that we are the, the idiots of uh, Europe. We just want to cut. There, there's a question about the spirituality of the Roma, how it feeds into the indigeneity <coughs> of Roma. And I, now, Roma is one thing, R Romuva is something else. Yes. So I, I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> if, that wasn't my question. No, right, okay. So, yeah. Right, okay. So we're talking about two different things because Roma is, is a different people, a different ethnic people uh, who still have a lot of their ancient traditions very much alive as well, but they're not Romuva. So I will put that one aside. Uh, <laughs> and actually, in the, the uh, 1998 uh, uh, founding congress of uh, then uh, World Congress of Ethnic Religion in the uh, village of Lithuania, we have uh, one uh, um, uh, uh, Roma from, uh, from France that came there and uh, spoke about his own tradition. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, to me. Uh, says, uh, has the Hellenic indigenous religion always been alive and, uh, and uh, underground, or has it been uh, reconstructed uh, through texts and so on? Did you grow up in this uh, uh, religion? Um, yes, we all grew up in this religion, um, except few ones that uh, uh, were lucky enough to be uh, members of uh, the few families that uh, kept this tradition alive in uh, uh, Greece and uh, uh, Italy. Uh, the last, uh, the strongest survival was in Italy, uh, where after the, the Gre Greece was occupied by the Ottomans, the Turks, uh, all the followers of uh, Yemistos Plitho went uh, to Italy, uh, worked there as uh, mercenaries to the Venetians and the Napolitanians, and uh, when later uh, the technique that they were using was light cavalry was uh, put aside uh, due to the gunpowder that uh, appeared, um, they had uh, enough money to turn to other 
to other uh, professions like um, ship owners, uh, merchants and so on. And uh, these people uh, kept uh, in their archives, their family archives, our tradition alive. I had the, I had the great luck to be accepted. I was contacted by them in 1998, 1994 after my third book that they had published and uh, it took a while to let me go and uh, read the archives in uh, Trieste. It was in 2010. It took 16 years to, to, to feel uh, safe, them to feel safe uh, for my person and to let me go there and uh, read and understand. Um, actually, we have uh, uh, unbroken historical uh, a continuation, and uh, this is what makes it worst for the ones that uh, in my country they don't want us to exist. Uh, but we, yes, we uh, never were broken. Well, we have come to the end of our evening. Um, we'd like to thank you all very much for coming, and uh, I'm sure if you have any other questions or whatever that. Uh, we would all be happy to. And yeah, and you can you can please take take one of these uh, which are back there, and then we have these up here, so you can sort of take your pick. Um, and uh, thank you. Could I get a photo with all three of you? Yes, I can take that. Thank you so much for your time.